Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Paint With Heart here in the Paint With Heart studios in New Hampshire. I am Cindy Harrison, the artist and host of Paint With Heart, a weekly program live on Zoom most Sundays at 3 p.m. Eastern and noontime Pacific. Before we go on to today's project, I would like to introduce you to my bestie in the Satellite LA office. Here she is, Ms. Meliz. Hi everybody, I'm Melissa Reyes at Ms. Meliz and MsMeliz.com, and I'm coming to you from Los Angeles, California. And I wanted to let you know that today the theme or the word for the week is inspire or inspiration. And um, my card, affirmations card deck, inspire, here it is. Um, I believe you can and you will. If you have the desire to make something happen, if you believe in yourself, it definitely will happen. And we've seen that time and time again. So inspiration for us as artists really comes from um, seeing something in our mind and making it happen on the, pal on the um, surface. So um, a wise person once told me that art enables us to find ourselves and lose ourselves at the same time. And I drew this um, mandala around the time that she told me that. That was my best friend, Cindy Harrison, and she inspires me every day. So I'm really excited that today she asked me to share how to draw a freestyle mandala because that is something that inspires me as I go on step by step. So we'll be doing that today. And what else are we going to be doing, Cindy? Oh, cool. Funny you should ask. <laughs> <laughs> Funny how that happens. <laughs> well, it, it is definitely an inspiring day. And today is one of those I haven't had for a, probably a year and a half um, where I don't know what I'm going to do. It's going to be live on camera. I'm going to like you said in that quote, lose myself in my artwork. I have an idea in my head. I don't know how it's going to come out on the surface, but together we will create something magical uh, because yeah, magic is happening here today. <laughs> well, that's awesome. I'm so excited. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a riot. Okay, so I started with my 10 by 10 wood panel. I sealed it with a multi-purpose sealer and gave it two coats of Snow White. Now I'm going to create a mixed media background and I say mixed media because I'll be using um, bubble wrap, paper, stencils, and we'll do some dripping of some paint as well. So there's going to be a bunch of different um, tools that I will be using to create this, making it a mixed media piece. First off, I need to design it to figure out where I want my pieces. I had printed off um, We the People, which is the beginning of our constitution, and I'm going to place it against this edge. I marked off on a 10 inch um, square canvas, I marked off two and a half inches and then I taped off to the right of that area. And because my paper has an antique white kind of feel to it, I'm going to actually paint this part with the antique white. So let me do that and I'll be right back. So this is one coat of antique white. I did put it around the sides, but I'm not sure how I'm going to finish the sides off yet. So just in case I decide to do it with the color fields, I did the side. So you see how this all of a sudden, I mean, it pops out here, but it sits down here. So you want to pick a color that's close to your background color so that you can push your paper design into the background and not have it popping out like a sore thumb. So right now I'm going to put this on with some decoupage. And to do that, I always start by putting the decoupage on 
the surface first. Get it tacky. Try not to have too much of a clump. Place this down where you want it. Make sure you get it where you want it right off the bat. And then smooth it out with your finger before you go and put excess on extra on the top. Because we are going to put extra on the top. And if you want, you can put some on the tape and adhere it to the tape as well. And then when you peel it off, you'll make a straight edge. And I'll show you how that works in a second. Now if you have the ability to let this sit for a few hours and have it dry naturally without assistance of a blow dryer, awesome. Go ahead and do that. I'm going to fast forward my drying process by using a hair, uh, hair dryer. So I shall do that and be right back. Now that this is dry, I'm going to, before I remove the tape, I'm going to take some asphaltum and I'm going to start to tone this whole area down. And to do that, I'm going to pick up a lot of water in my brush, see if you can tell, and I'm going to make a wash of color. And then I can go over this whole area, tone down the letters as well. And then with some clear wrap or a plastic bag, you can place it on there smush it up and lift it off and get some texture. If you don't seal the top of your paper, then the paper will absorb this color and it will be all dark. If it starts drying, let it be. I'm going to dry that real quickly. And I'm going to add more color just around the edges here. And then I'm going to take my wrap, plastic wrap and just pounce on top. Wash my brush out and just kind of soften the edges. So now it kind of all blends in. You do still see where the paper ended, but it's not as stark. Let me dry that quickly. With a good clean three quarter inch wash brush, I'm going to pick up on the corner of my brush some of that paint, um, the asphaltum and I'm just going to do a side load. So again, um, for those of you who don't know how to properly load your brush for a side load, let me show you. So you have your brush full of water, right? See that shine? When I put it down, see the water disappears and that shine is less. When you lose the shine, the high shine, turn it over, place it down, and lift it off again. That should be the right amount, quote unquote. Scoop up some of the straight paint, not the watered down paint, but scoop up some of that straight paint in the corner of your brush, 
and then place it on your palette, all hairs down on the surface with the same pressure all the time. Flip it over in that same puddle, all hairs down, same amount of pressure at the same time. You can walk it in, flip it over, start on the outside of that puddle, walk it in until you lift off all the paint. So the paint is now in your brush and you didn't leave it on the surface. Then you can come over to your surface and with the paint towards the outer edge, you should have a nice float. And this will age your area here to make it look like it's old document paper. And I keep going in the same puddle. You're looking at me, I'm going in the same puddle. I'm not making new puddles all around my palette. As long as that puddle is still wet, I can, I can go back into that puddle and keep doing this. And the more you walk it in, one way or the other, the wider it'll get. On here too, all the hairs are on the surface with the same amount of pressure all the time. I'm not tipping, I'm not tipping my brush like this when I go and do this load. I'm putting all the hairs on the surface at the same time, same amount of pressure. If anything, I'm putting a little bit more pressure on the water side of the brush to make that paint grade eight across the brush. The water part of the brush will pull the paint so you'll get that um, color gradated from the solid color, if you will, and lighter, 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 lighter to your background color. That's what that's all about. Okay, now that I've got that on there, I'll quickly blow dry that. So before I remove the tape, I want to do this side. And this side is going to be with some rubber stamps and <clears throat> black, lamp black paint. I have a rubber stamp with words. Now if you actually video, um, copy all of the Declaration of Independence. You can tear this up and place it here, but I have a rubber stamp. I didn't want that dark brown color. And a piece of foam that I cut up from packaging. And I'm going to take some black and with my foam, pounce it in the black, go around so it's not too thick in any one area, and then take some area of your stamp. This is why you need the wood and not canvas. And I'm going to place it on my surface, push it down, pull it up. You don't want square edges. You want it to be just an area within your rubber stamp. Place it down, pull it up. I'll do one more half an area over here and maybe turn it around and do a half an area. Now if you think you're going to get over this, take your paper towel and put it over that edge and then put your rubber stamp down. I need more paint. Okay, if I'm going to put that down, I want it on this side. Put them upside down, upside right, every which direction. If it doesn't come all the way off, don't try to put more on. Just leave it like it is. When you're done, I do wash this off and let it dry and wash this out. These things wash out real easily and you can use them over and over. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Make sure those are dry. 
and we're going to take out some antique white and I'm going to do stripes. I'm not um, particular on the stripes. I'm going to use an old uh, one inch. We want a little bit of water in our in our paint, not a lot. So I'm going to have just some water, but not as much as I did when I did the, uh, the asphaltum. And then I'm going to do wavy lines. So if you want to start in the middle, figure out where the middle is, put your brush down all the hairs on the surface, same amount of pressure at the same time, and I'm going to wave it up and wave it down and back up again. If you need to go over it, turn it around, start on the opposite side, and follow your brush stroke. So I got my first wave. I'm going to leave the distance of my brush blank because I'm going to put the red there and I'm going to come down here and do the same thing. Follow your first line. Wave it up, come wave it down, and it might not be perfect but it's the imperfections are what make it unique to you. It's your art. Go right off the tape. Follow that line, start down here on the tape, wave up, wave down, and back up again. Wave up, wave down, back up again. Okay. Now I'm going to do it above the line. If it gets too opaque, you're not seeing your letters, add a little bit more water. Get it so you can see what you're doing. If you can't see what you're doing, it makes it harder, right? So that's why I keep turning my piece around. There you have your antique white stripes. Next color we're going to put out is going to be country red. And we're going to do the same manner. Same technique, same manner. Same brush. Get most of the water out. Come in. If when you're in your puddle and you feel you have too much water, don't hesitate to go over to your paper towel and remove some of that water. Now we're going to go in the negative spaces, the spaces that are still white. We want them country red. If you start to see you're getting too dark, what I do is I take some drops of, of water on my finger, flick it off, and then I'll pick that moisture up instead of putting my whole brush in the water. And see how it's getting darker? I'm more watery up here than down here. So again, Pick up some of that water, give yourself some drops, and then work that into your brush. So if I put water on here, I can kind of go back over. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Make these a little darker. but not so much that it covers my black lettering. So 
So now you have your red lines. Next thing I'm going to add to this is some of the midnight blue and we're going to do technique with bubble wrap. Use your fat, your uh, one inch brush here, pick up some blue and just brush it over your bubble wrap. Then we're going to place it down. Press, don't slide it. Press it down and then lift it off. You can add some more. Press it down. Lift it off. Now because I didn't dry the red first, it's mixing and making a dark purple look and it's also leaving some white ridges around the red. If you don't like this, um, I would wait and make sure you dry your red before you put your, your blue on. Okay, I'm going to wipe mine off, pick up some of the blue again, and then I'm going to come over to the We the People area and place some on there and see how it looks without mixing with the red. So you can get crazy with this if you want. Um, if you want to put red bubbles, I mean, you can add as many kinds of bubbles as you want. And I had a lot of water on that, so you see what happens when you have a lot of water. Now, I want to show you some drips. And the drips are going to be done by, I'm going to take my cup. Before I do that, I'm going to dry the bubbles real fast. I'm going to take some red. Just a drop. And I'm going to take my pipette, pick up some water in my water bucket and my palette knife and mix that red. I probably need some more red. I want it real drippy. I don't want it very opaque. I want it transparent. This is where you're going to want a piece of paper towel underneath your piece. And I'm going to, with my pipette, pick up some of that red, start at the top, and start putting drips. Let those drop down, and with your brush, you can kind of start removing some of this excess. And you can also do it by lifting this up and touching that to the bottom as it puddles so you don't get a line of red at the bottom. Go ahead and dry that. Now we're ready to remove our tape. And I said I would show you the trick. So you put your, bring your tape up on both sides. Put your straight, your T-square ruler against the edge of the tape on both sides. And then press down, make sure you press down, especially where the paper is. And as it tears, it'll tear the paper off with it. So then your paper, it gives you a straight edge. I'm going to throw this away because it's full of paint. 
but the next thing I'm going to do is, because this is dry, I can take more tape and place it over both sides. Put this against this side. Make sure you press down on that edge. Make sure you get down on that edge real good. Making sure everything's dry before you do this. Now we're going to go and paint this part with the straight midnight blue. And I'm going to use my three quarter inch wash brush because it's just about the same size. It's going to be a little transparent to begin with. So it's going to take probably three coats. You can choose how many coats you want. If your edges are clean, I have red bleeding in underneath the tape I had. So I'm going to end up doing probably another two coats after I dry this one. So do that and come back. So it took about three coats as I predicted to get a nice deep blue. And I don't know where I got these from, but I have, I have these stencils that I picked up probably a yard sale or a giveaway at some point. And they're adhesive, reusable, and they were all in a row. So I thought, perfect. I'm going to take those and place them right across my piece. I have to go this way. Try and center them. I'm going to try and center them. If you don't have a row, then you're going to start by stenciling one in the middle and then go out that way. Although in this video I use Snow White, I would suggest you use Antique White. It sets better with the project. And I'm going to use my number eight dome round. No water. It's going to be a stencil brush. If you have a stencil brush, go ahead and use that. But I'm going to use my dome round. Wipe the excess off on paper towel and start to stencil in your stars. So go ahead and do all of those and then come back. If your area is longer than your stencil, pick up your stencil and place it over the last star and then see where you need to put so it looks natural like it continued on. Okay, now we can remove this tape and see if it, our blue bled underneath our tape. If it did, we'll have to clean it up. But it looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Be careful when you go over the paper. I'm tearing this way away from the paper. Slowly, so if you start lifting, you can stop yourself. It shouldn't lift if it's been able to have time to dry and that you did put the decoupage over top of it. Pretty good. I feel good about that. Okay, now I want to work on this area with some more, some more things. I'm going to go to my um, DecoArt has these stencils. Um, personally yours, this one's Urban Ink called Pride and you can get them from DecoArt directly. And it had some really nice patriotic things on it. And I ended up using, uh, or wanting to use this eagle. 
and I want to put that kind of in the upper, uh, just above center. You know, if you did the center, it's just above center and in sort of the middle of my flag area. And I'm going to take, again, my stencil brush. You do not want to put your stencil brush in water at this point, but I did. So I'm going to have to use a new one. And I'm going to mix some white with some blue and make a lighter shade of blue. If you want a palette knife mix so you always have the same color, you can do that. Wipe most of it off. And then I'm going to scrub this paint in and make my eagle. If it's not showing up enough, add more blue because you do have to go over this red. Not so that you're completely covering the red solidly, but So I'm going to do the whole eagle and then I'll come right back. So that's what the eagle looks like on here. The other stencil I liked was the word freedom. So I'm going to put that up in the upper corner, kind of on the same similar angle as the bird. I am going to want to use white. Well, Let's do go straight into the um, darker blue. Let's do the darker blue first. Well, using straight midnight blue. If you need to pounce, you can pounce. I kind of pounce and do a circular motion. I don't want to push it underneath the stencil because then it will bleed. Okay, let's take that off and see what that looks like. So you see the, the words there, right? I'm going to wash my brush out. If I have a dry brush, I'm going to pick that up. Now if you only have one of the brushes, one of the dome brushes or stencil brush, and you need to reuse it, reuse it, reuse it with different colors. Have a piece of uh, wet wipe, have a wet wipe at your desk so you can wipe off the color on a wet wipe and this will keep your brush dry so you can continue to reuse it. I'm going to place the stencil back on Freedom, but I'm going to offset it just a titch and I'm going to offset it to the right and I'm going to offset it to the top. So I leave a little bit. If you do it this way, you can see that right now you can see the red. So I'm going to offset it just a titch. Maybe put it, pull it back just a little bit to the left. And I'm going to take my dry brush and I'm going to pick up straight white, wipe off the excess, and go over the letters again. Okay, moment of truth. Let's release our stencil and see what we got. Ta-da! If you want the freedom to show up more prominent, you can dry that. And once it's dry, you can go back over it with a number four flat. But this way here, you have a little bit of a shadow behind it which helps the word to pop. I'm not looking for it to actually come out and jump out at you. I want it to blend in with the background so I want it a little bit of the same value as what it's sitting on so that it's there but it's not hitting you in the face. Now we're ready 
to do a free, what my girlfriend Melissa Reyes calls, a free style mandala. Hi everybody. So I'm gonna show you how to do a free style uh, mandala. So this is freestyle mandala. Oops. Mandala. There. So um, this is one that I drew before and colored in and a mandala is a geometric figure representing the universe um, in Hindu and Buddhist symbolism. And um, as you can see here, this one looks like a flower. And um, this was a freestyle. So we start with this circle in the middle and then just build onto it and go around. And you can use any style of design that you like. Here's a coloring book that shows some examples. So you're starting in the middle, you kind of go around in a circle and then add these little embellishments and keep going around. And um, this one has a lot of uh, different kinds of designs. So this one shows some how you can fill it in with different um, leaf designs. So this one happens to be garden. Oops kind of representative of uh, flowers, but I kind of am drawn to the floral designs. Uh, here's one that I did uh, when I was inspired by a rose and kind of started off with this little, you know, rose petal idea. And then um, I had a picture that had a bee, so I added a little bee. But um, as you can see, it's really more modern you know, abstract. And um, anyway, I have been inspired a lot by this book, The Mandala Guidebook. And this shows a lot of different ideas of how to draw paint and color expressive mandala art by my friend Catherine Costa. And um, Cindy and I have, well, Cindy met her in person um, and got this book for me, but um, we've met her and interviewed her online. And so she has a lot of different um, details about how to uh, draw and um, be inspired by different kinds of mandalas. And this one is actually on painted backgrounds. And this is what we're going to do today, where Cindy's going to show you how to do, or has probably shown you already, how to do a background. And then we're going to paint over with a marker of your, with your freestyle mandala. So it's as simple as that. You want to make it big and bold so you can see your background over it. And that's um, the idea of what we'll be doing today. And here she used paint pens and um, so a couple of um, contrasting colors. So I'm going to use black marker on this um, white paper so you can get the idea. Here's my black marker. So I'll just start with, um, usually what I do to find the center of my paper is just kind of fold a little bit there so I know right where the center is. And I'll start with the circle. And then I'll put another circle around it. I'm not very good at circles, I never have been. And then I'll put, let's just use, uh, um, straight edge. It, it just right and measure it out a little bit if you want. I think that one's longer now. I've got to go around and measure them. It's two centimeters of each. Whoops. This always happens to me. It doesn't have to be perfect. But then, um, you know, nothing is. Center here. So once you draw your lines straight across, you want to do the angle. So now you have kind of a star shape. 
and then you can connect them and there's a lot of different like if you look at this book there's a lot of different ways that you can do a design you can make a straight design or a curly design or leaf design to connect and you're going to just go all the way around so that's what i'll do here i'm going to go and just kind of connect it with an oval and it helps to just turn the paper so you get that same fluid movement as you turn it and just do a repetitive movement otherwise you find if you go if you go around you're doing a different movement then they don't look the same mine doesn't look the same anyway but um, that's because I don't pay close attention to detail <laughs> but you can it's up to you and then once you have that you can decide what to do next so um, here I'm going to use my ruler again and I'm going to go I'm going to put a dot um, in between each section so I'm going to find my center and put it here and then I'll figure out uh, I'll go half an inch out outside of each of my petals I'm going to put a dot and the dot's going to help me to find where I'm going to connect my next um, piece, my next um, design. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a moment. So just go around and put the dots on, towards the middle of each of those petals. Like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at these points and make a little pointed leaf or pointed design that ends at that dot. That helps me to guide to get them relatively the same size. And of course, if I were good at getting symmetry, these would all be exactly the same. <laughs> but uh, you'll get the idea. And depending on how um, precise you are, yours would, you know, look a little bit better. <laughs> and also better with practice. So, but there you go. So now you've got a row of those kinds of leaves. And now I want to do something different. I think I might do a sharper angle. So um, I'm going to go and do the dots again. And I will do them... I'm going to try to do them a little more freestyle, so I'm going to do them in between here and do some dots. And, you know, I'm going fast, but you can go slower so that you can get it a little bit more precise. And, of course, you could start with a pencil on a piece of paper, a tracing paper, and get your design just right and erase and get it just right and then transfer that on to your... Um, background and then fill in with the with a marker and I of course suggest that you do that. So now I'm going to go from the middle of this petal and go from the dot to the middle of the petal and get my stir So now and I don't plan it out. I make a decision on what to do next when I get there. I look at it and I think, what should I do next? You know, so it's not like a, a step by step, uh, I'm going to, you know, make it look like this or I think it through. I just get there and when I'm done, I'm, I know I'm done. Now, a lot of times I'll decide to pick a design that I like and copy it. And I, and I try to, you know, do the exact same one. And of course, there are styles that mean different things. So, you know, you could do this type of a flower, or you can do a design like this. And so you would want to section it off for a purpose. But this is a freestyle mandala, so it's really not planned out. So I think that for this next row, I'm going to do a zigzag line through here, kind of like a, a wavy line. 
or, you know. So this should be pretty easy. And it's kind of going slanted this way for some reason. So I'm going to slant them all this way. I tend to make it small and end up with a, a lot of busyness inside. So, um, and I do like to color it in and get a lot of intricate detail. So you don't have to fill in every space. You can make it bigger in between so that you your background really shows through so this might be it this might be it it might be finished for you but if you have a bigger space to fill and maybe you have a big background you you want to make your spaces bigger you're like that might have been not a place you wanted to fill in maybe you would just want to go like this you know and go from one to the other and just make it really big you could overlap these petals and kind of just go around in a bigger swooping motion so that you get something big um, in between. And then if it's not even, you know, you can you can work with that and make them all uneven. You know, so let me get really wild <laughs> so that is a freestyle mandala and you're done thank you melissa if you're doing a free this freedom one and you want the line drawing um, i have included it but you can do a freestyle mandala with whatever theme you're working with. So pick a paper, design, words, whatever you like over here, your, and put that and start coloring it the way your colors are to decorate your house. I wanted to do a patriotic theme, and this is how I did it. I'm going to use my Sharpie marker, and now I'm going to do my freestyle mandala. Know this, this is not easily correctable. So you may want to draw yours out on a piece of paper using pencil or with a graphite pencil on your piece to plan it so that when you start using the marker you don't make a mistake. If you do make a mistake, work it into your design. Don't try to correct it. I started mine um, I wanted to start mine with a star center because I have the star theme going on. So I chose to do it in the corner and have it splay out rather than have a center point and have it come out of that. I wanted a partial mandala. So
Now I found myself getting into my eagle, which is fine because what eagles in the background, but I'm going to stop here and then I'm going to start to color my mandala to bring more attention to it. And to do that, I'm going to use some paint and start coloring in the design. I am going to start with using my number three round and I'm going to pick up some white I'm also going to paint every other stripe here. Now I'm going to clean off my brush and do a red on my stripes. I have a lot of water in there so I'm not necessarily covering up my background. I'm just kind of glazing over it. So if you want to go ahead and add, we can add some um, blue but make sure it's not too dark, so thin that out to kind of offset some of the red. There we go. And now I'm going to do my ocean. And to do that, I'm going to mix some of the midnight blue with some of the white and make it a light blue color kind of like I did for that and try to do my oceans now I'm going to go in with the more blue less white this design would be a nice um, memory box too for a loved one who served our country and thank you for serving our country and helping to keep us safe and keep the battle off of our homeland and sorry if you lost somebody in the service while protecting our country if you want the areas around the eye to be more white you would let it dry and then add another coat and that kind of helps pop that mandala up a little bit so that you see that coming. I'm going to add a little bit of the blue and white mix, more blue than white. And I'm going to go into the triangle that is the second one in. Again, just to repeat color. Then I will take the red and I will go in the little one in the bottom. So there's no red down here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put a red one. Because we have red ones up there, we can have a red one down there. If you don't like the open areas here, we can go ahead and put some designs there. I'm going to brighten up my freedom. now that it's dry. So now we're looking at this and I'm thinking that this side is very dark and old world and this side is very new crisp and pristine. So we need to marry this piece together. It looks like two separate individual pieces. So to do that what I'm going to do is take the asphaltum and start to shade around the outer edge of this to try and bring it back in and tie it all together. And I'm going to do that with a side load. And using my three quarter inch uh, flat brush, or this is a number 24 sharp 140, but it's equivalent to a three quarter. A little bit of water in my brush. Remember now, if you have trouble side loading the way that I showed you with just the right quote unquote amount of water in the brush, Here's the trick for you. Take your brush that's loaded with water and as long as everything is dry you can do this and pre-wet the area you're going to 
want to put that float of color on the side load or float of color and you're going to pre-wet beyond that area make sure that it's wet but not dripping just it's wet but not dripping don't put the brush back in the water or on the paper towel go right into your puddle and pick up some of that paint on the corner of your brush on one half of your brush and then start to drag that color across I'm going to drag it across the bottom too and I'm going to turn my piece and typically I like to see where my where the brush is so that I have brush my line that I'm putting the paint against in my eyes now if you do this you're going to wipe off what you put on over here so start on a corner bring it that way and then swoop it up so you don't wipe off what you just put on if it starts to dry just get out of dodge wait till it's completely dry or dry it yourself and then you can do this side again all the hairs on the surface at the same time with the same amount of pressure and then stop because once it starts drying you're liable to lift off the wet parts and the dry parts will stay behind so you want to not do that I'm gonna dry this and then I'm gonna put some down the inside as well pre-wet as long as those are dry you can pre-wet load that brush line it up so I can see what I'm doing if it disappears it's because you have too much water it could be in your brush could be on your pat on your piece either way if you've got too much water that's what will happen I'm gonna wash this off here with just a clean brush Try to always go back to the edge when you do this. So see how it's now starting to all fit in? And that's what you want to do. I would dry it again and I think I put a second coat around the other three edges because I feel like it could use a little bit more depth. Yeah, and then while I was talking to you, just now you mentioned doing a, a star, so I started playing around with points and I uh, came up with this one, where'd it go? So, um, so this oh, one, cool. I like yeah, that one. Yes. yeah, you know, so I started by just, you know, using it all points and then I added a few circles in there, so. But I really like what you did. I like, I, you're obviously much more creative than I am. <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm just trying to think of, you know, the uh, American patriotic, whatever. And can you see like, these are the eyes? Yeah, definitely. And stuff from the dollar bill is what I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I got the mountains majesty and the oceans, the, How's this? <laughs> I should know how that song goes. Yeah, I love it. Thank you so much, Cindy. I think this is a really great idea. It was fun creating with you today. Thank you. It was fun creating with you too. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. This was really fun, Cindy. I like how inspired we got and all the different really creative things that um, we can add to make our own art special <laughs> and it's nice how we can get inspired from each other and thank you for sharing your very patriotic inspiration with us i hope everybody has a great week
<laughs> thank you, <laughs> Melissa. And thank you everyone for coming. And remember, if you're here on YouTube, please share, like, subscribe, ring the little notifications and leave comments because we'd love to hear from you and we'd love to see what, uh, what you've been inspired to create. So everyone until next week, have a great one. And remember to always paint with heart. <laughs>